Access the night. Access the night. Music lovers, I'm Soundbite, the internet's only DJ superhero. And today, I'm facing my greatest adversary yet, one who all reviewers fear, the god empress of Hagerstan herself, Diamanda Hagen. But why am I not afraid? Well, it's because of this. Mistress, we are receiving a transmission. Fair warning, folks. This may get messy. What is it? Diamanda Hagen. A pleasure, to be sure. Who the fuck are you, and how did you get onto my screen? I was watching reruns of the Sun Tots, and I want to continue. Who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Soundbite, Internet DJ Superhero. And you have been charged with over 207 counts of grievous internet harm, 370 counts of critic cruelty, not to mention various war crimes of every nation. Is there anything you want to say against these charges? Fuck you, you Power Rangers reject. Minions! Get them off my screen. Very well. I find you guilty. You see, Mistress, your reign of terror is over. Mistress, he appears to be blocking our signal. WE CAN'T TURN HIM OFF! I've connected your entire technical network into my armor, and unless you face your punishment, I promise you the repercussions will be hell. You and I are going to review a movie, a movie so bad that it fits the crime perfectly, and you are going to hate it. What is it? Burlesque, featuring Christina Aguilera and Cher. Minion! Unplug the whole fucking system! Mistress, none of our electronics are responding. They're all stuck on on. If you don't, I will put Mamma Mia! The Musical on constant repeat on every channel, frequency, and electrical device in Hagerstan forever. You will not be able to go anywhere without hearing Give Me a Man After Midnight. Find you. I'm gonna fucking use a blowtorch in your fucking helmet, cut it open, and then I'm gonna use a chainsaw in your skull. I'm gonna feed your own brains to you with a spoon! But until that time, shall we begin? Fine. Fine. But I'm gonna imagine skinning you alive with various household objects. For novelty's sake. So we open the movie with what looks and sounds like it's in danger of turning into a Shania Twain music video. Oh fuck, it did. 16.50 for you, 16.50 for me. Oh look, she can count, isn't that cute? So the premise is a small town girl dreams of making it big as a dancer and singer, and her boss is the only thing keeping her dreams away, by not giving her the money he owes her. Hey, do you got a problem with management? Put a note in the suggestion box. Clearly this guy is scum. He's got stubble and he's overweight. Taking what he owes me, not a penny more. You take that money, he's gonna come after you. And he'll come after her for stealing? Like, fuck he will. Unless she's half naked and covered in chocolate, I don't think he's gonna move at all. Thank you, plot device. It is here we find our main protagonist, Ali, played by Christina Aguilera. She is planning to run away. Go. I got everything covered here. Right after she finishes her shift. Even though she has the money. Yeah, get used to the stupid. Oh look, I hope she's gonna hang herself. Ha! You wish it was over that quickly. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. 
No, this gives us the opportunity to show the audience she can sing. But correct me if I'm wrong, but when you put money into a jukebox, the lyrics usually come over as well, don't they? I find it hard to believe that a small town country diner would have a karaoke version just lying around. Where the hell did that microphone come from? This is all tucked in with the woman dancing. Wow, a film called Burlesque actually features something that's vaguely burlesque. Minus the good parts. AKA the tits. Another great thing to get used to. This film is like being drunk and the only girl left at the bar is over 300 pounds, smells like feet, and still manages to be a dick tease. So finally the music finishes and oh fuck you movie, fuck you! Okay, it's Marilyn Manson, so let's fuck you, but still fuck you! So Ali is walking around Hollywood trying to find work with no success tip. Is this a fucking cover? A remix? What the fuck is this? Why is this here? As I was saying, night falls and she finally rocks up at Club Burlesque. The question as to why she is there, how she got there, or if there is any point seems now irrelevant as the plot for this movie makes a sluggish attempt to move forward. It appears that the woman's walk was so pointless that she wandered into the 19th century, where no doubt Trent Reznor is playing in the nearest tavern. Trust me, it would be a heaven sent compared to what is really down there. Show a little more. Ah! ah. Show a little So Cher is down there singing, Welcome to Bellas, which begs the question as to who is running the place while she is performing. Wow, she must have a really great business model which allows her to- Remember you got that balloon payment due on the first. And he's not gonna give me the money. Be perfectly honest, I haven't got a goddamn clue. Nothing's what it seems. Oh, never mind. Also, why are they singing this as it appears sometime in the middle of the night? I find it hard to believe that the moment Ali walks down those stairs is when they officially started. It's in case we didn't know the name of the film, or what the film was about. Hint, it's about fucking burlesque. You may not so Ali is stopped by... Alan Cummings? Ah, Alan Cummings. A fabulous pansexual Scottish man playing a fabulously badly accented gay American man. Why did you agree to do this movie? Was the rent really that far behind? I'm sure you can put on makeup and pants around for money and keep your dignity. You just need to be in cavalry again or take to prostitution. Both would do more good for society at large. You turned down X-Men 3, but you decided to feature in this pile? For shame. So, the place is run by Tess, played by Cher, and her partner slash ex-husband Vince, played by Peter Gallagher. The club is in trouble and Vince wants her to sell. Tess is not interested, even though she seems to have the business sense of a retarded chicken. You won't talk to me before the show, you won't talk to me after the show. It's, it's like you're avoiding me. Well, I didn't divorce you to spend more time with you. Tess's best friend and the person who actually seems to run the club is Sean, played by Stanley Tucci. I almost didn't recognize you. What with not playing a German and not being in World War II? As much as I love Stanley Tucci, he has completely phoned in his performance. He still ends up being the best actor in the damn movie, though. In fact, it seems to be the case with any talent in this film. If they can act, they didn't, and if they couldn't act, well, they proved it to us. Excuse me, I'm looking Anyway, to on with the story. Ali walks backstage apparently without being stopped by security. Hi, are you, you would think that a place that advertises half-naked promiscuous women would have some sort of security to stop randoms walking past. The behind the stage place looks bigger than the main room. It looks bigger than NORAD. It's here we meet Ali's main rival Nikki, played by Kirsten Bell, who's meant to be playing the bitchy main girl who's the star and Tess's favourite. Extra dry, straight up. When she asks Sally for a drink, back. we get this line. Did your mama ever tell you it's not polite to stare? You're just so damn beautiful. Like, well, in that case, screw your mama and stare away. Her screwing your mother would make a far more entertaining film. You can even keep the big fucking musical numbers. How about this? A chart topping hit about her looking down and seeing her mother's vagina for the first time since she looked back when leaving it. No one would ever know. Know what? The chair dude. Is that supposed to make us like her? Because that's just dickish. I hope she gets hit by a car. More so. I'm not sure which one I hate more at this point, but at least I know Ali has better comebacks. After that, Ali walks down and starts taking orders. Without being signed or anything. 
I guess that's how Miss Jones in your Adam Adamant reviews keeps going undercover, dear Amanda. Getting a job is as simple as starting work. I'm getting operatives in government positions the hard way, both the assassinations and the fraud. Right. Oh, I forgot to mention the obligatory love interest, Jack, played by that guy from Never Back Down. He seems to play the brooding young teenager really well, but he's really struggling with this role. He blurts and helps her out, and he is safe because he has a fiance. Yeah, like that has ever stopped anyone. I think so. Hey, Jack. Cher lets her stay, and she starts taking all the moves and learning all about burlesque. This woman has no idea what burlesque is. Well, it could be argued that the makers of the film have a shaky idea about it too. But are we supposed to be on her side? She walks in, demands a job, beats a transphobic bitch, spaces out, and is now trying to change an old art form getting live singing to it. The club is trying to be bought out by Eric Day, right the aka McDreamy, and Tess is refusing to sell. From this point on, I'm gonna call him Slimy Bastard Von Stupid Hair. The guy well, is offering a million dollars for the club. There is no you conceivable there reason for this other than to show another protagonist and to introduce a threat so it can be saved at the 11th hour. Really for fuck's so sake. My club. So, blonde Mother bitch suggests God. singing, which they do with Tess anyway, and she gets shot down wonderfully. Wouldn't it be great if we actually heard the girls sing? It would be, no, it would be great. Honey, people come here to watch the dancers dance and to watch them lip sync to the great singer. You understand? Because it's above your pay grade. I don't really get what that means. Just hear me out no, one more time. This no, is a really good idea. Allie, Allie, Maybe I have no, no, right no, no, Her timing's no, terrible, but Tess clearly has a wonderful plan to save the club. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? Sure no? No. So Allie goes back to her apartment to find it broken into, and all her money gone, so she runs over to Love Interest's house. He brings her in and offers her a drink. Sibling. And if I'm lucky, some date rape. But I'm not lucky. The bitch just comes over to crash and take over his apartment. You, you would hope her. I would be exaggerating, but as you will see, I'm really not. It's beautiful. Who wrote that? I did. Cliche number 12. Guess what will happen in the future? It's really good. She starts walking around in just a shirt and we get this line. It's the least I could do. It smells great. She's pretty. Your sister? Fiance. You straight? Are you fucking that blind? The guy's obviously yeah. been played straight. I don't know the day. It's like she's been brought up in a hellhole where they openly gave people she's heard of her flaming dramatic yeah, drag queens. She's from Iowa. Oh, it's like she's from fucking Iowa then. Wait, Wait didn't him date Frippinger give her the clue that he was straight? Really or did he not even bother to do that? Come on, movie! Hurt this woman! Have her eaten by rats! Gonna run over by a car! Fucking something! The worst part about this is as soon as she realizes he is both straight and unavailable, she tries to leave, as she thinks the manipulation won't work. So to be clear, if he was gay and single, it's okay to bait someone's house and you walk around their place naked. You have nowhere to go, and I have a couch. You have an apartment! I assume she came over because she was distraught. Surely she can go back! Or is there a weird New York rule that if your apartment is broken into, you lose it? Hmm. No wonder they're crazy there, it's one step from beyond Thunderdome, with Alan Cumming as Tina Turner. So, with the love interest and her sharing space now for some reason, it's time for the plot to plot along again. Oh god, please don't have the flu. One of the dancers gets pregnant. Oh god, please have the flu. Why do they call it morning sickness if it hits you at every freaking moment of the day? J line number 13. So Cher starts auditioning, and they don't freaking tell her! Cher's opposition to the evil blonde one is there simply so she can struggle. She won't watch her dance because we're in the first act. Simple as. She was told she could audition and now she's a waitress and they won't let her audition. Because anyone who's a waitress can't be a fucking dancer. Alright. Which number do you want to see? I know every single one of them. You know every single number. Which one do you want to see? Wagon wheel, what to She see? needs to know all the What's fucking routines perfectly before Cher will even watch her audition. And there's even a gang of idiots watching and totally shocked that one of the waitresses is actually going to audition. One of the waitresses is battling the dancer segregation. It's amazing. Okay, I'm just 
gonna say it. Worst dance ever. This is the least erotic dancing I've ever seen. And I've seen this. Oh, come on, Tess. Come on, I'll, I'll, I'll practice till I bleed. I, I know I can do this. Oh yes, Christina. Baking is so attractive and puts you above the other professionals. I swear to God I won't disappoint you. Didn't anybody ever give you a shot in But of course life? Cher is going to give so her the part, if, if not reluctantly. I, 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 but it's right, not very God. convincing since she is smiling no, while saying, I don't want to give it to her. Great to see those acting classes paid off, Cher. You won't regret it. I am so gonna regret this. What the fuck that was an ad lib? After seeing the trailer. This whole thing is stupid, and it only exists to give the evil blonde obstacles in her way. What is it's it, manufactured. Alice? They could have had the boss be a complete cunt. Well, it's well, Cher. Like... It takes more suspension of disbelief to believe she's Maybe not a complete cunt. But no, Cher is not playing a complete cunt. She's playing someone who's insane. They instead of everyone being well, fucking crazy and not sure giving the evil blonde a fucking go because the film is constructed to have her be amazing because she's played by a fucking pop star. And, with my new raise, I will be off your couch in no time. You, you have an apartment! Here we go. So now we get to see again the real number, brains behind this operation. Stanley Tushy. This motherfucker is a fashion savant. He just grabs clothes without checking if they're precise. Or if they're clean. And remember, with or if nobody owns don't. them. Pull the trigger. Stanley Tucci, you were funnier when you were orchestrating the deaths of the Jews in World War II. And you were funnier when you were a Jew whose death was being orchestrated in World War II. Either way, you're not fucking funny in this! Demanda! Bite me! So now we get a dancing montage of her learning the moves to Madonna. Oh good, she can dance like a twat in public. I would like to put on a song more appropriate for the moment. I've lived in apartments, I've lived in a home. I traveled in trailers when I used to roam. But now in these places you won't have me yet. But I'm happy I live in a split level head. I do what I want to, no worries, no cares. If anyone bugs me, I climb level stairs. Way up to a level where astronauts dread. But I'm happy I live in a split level head. It's your tiny nothing, I couldn't care less. I don't rush for buses and trains are a mess. So the girls after training say they want to go for pizza, and they don't wait for her. Oh, it's so hard to be the greatest dancer slash bitch in the world. I think I'll just mope and hope that someone maternal, but not too maternal, will help me out. Because no one realizes how amazing I am at dancing. Body that could stop a truck. You have a face that could stop a truck. So the granite you injected. My question is, why is she taking makeup advice from a woman whose eyes appear to be sunken into a skull? Oh, wow. It's as though a professional makeup artist did her makeup for that shot. <laughs> Beautiful. This film is doing my fucking hair again! Oh, this is like fucking 20 or 30 different types of stupid and they're all hanging around together being all like, we are stupid, we are stupid, and they're keeping doing that over and over and over and over fucking again! How much is left? 80 minutes. This film doesn't even deserve an original reaction from me. I didn't see that coming. The guy finally gets the memo that they're in the second act, and therefore it's time for the conflict, and gets okay. pissed off at having the evil blonde staying with him. Of course, within seconds, he needs her to stay and loves having her over because of off-screen crap. I'm gonna suck it up. And I'm gonna let you stay a little bit longer. You have your own fucking apartment! The upshot Are is she in? decides to stay with him, but now she gets the bed and all the closets. Because she's a fucking bitch. It's his fucking place! Oh, boy, just kill her. Kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her! He saved your fucking ass. You just said you couldn't afford the places and you take his bed while his fiance is away. I hate you. Killing it! Killing me! More mention of the axes falling for the club. But if I can't raise the amount of money on that piece of paper by the end of this month, I lose the club. I would like to point out the following points here. One, not using your floor space. Two, hiring staff you don't need. Three, throwing props into the audience. Four, using enough lighting to see the damn club from space. Five, not taking business advice. Six, not understanding your business. Be perfectly honest, I haven't got a goddamn clue. Clearly, I can't understand why your club is failing. 
So Nikki turns up drunk and loses her spot, giving Christina the chance to be the lead. I just don't want to step on anybody's toes. Really? Because everything you said when trying to get the job begged to differ. So, second bitch sabotages the music to show Ali up. I wonder what's gonna happen now. Wow, she's singing. Like it's not actually a live performance. Either that or she's impersonating Billy Holiday being killed by a panther. Are those mics live? That doesn't make sense if they were lip syncing before. And if they aren't, how the hell does she project a voice over a band? Holy shit, it's a revolution! They just invented mixing dancing, skimpy costumes, a band, and singing. This is going to be the biggest thing till Britney Spears invents sliced bread next year. I never told me you could sing like that. I tried to tell you, I did Okay, 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 alright. Hey, here's a thought, Tess. Shut the fuck up and listen to people! This is what we're gonna do. You guys know the songs, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so tomorrow we're gonna rehearse all day long. Then tomorrow night, you're gonna sing. We're gonna go straight to the show live. So, any questions? Building an entire act around one singer sounds like a great idea. Unless they get sick. Or go to a better club. Or extort you for money. Sheer business genius. See what I did there? Because this is the best comedy you're going to get from this movie. You're crying with happiness, right? <laughs> Good. Okay. So finally, she is accepted now as the star. We're in the oh, and the love right? interest starts falling I mean, for her. Who knew that you could do that? Thanks, Jack. Anyway. Why? Because my fiance isn't on screen. What? And you are. What? Well, no, just the way you're gazing after. I have a fiance. You know, I could save an hour yes, of my time and a fuckload right. of the audiences by stating that the waiter's song, we because he's a songwriter, will be sang by the evil blonde and this will somehow save the club. Let me guess. But tell. don't tell Soundbite. Hagen, I'm editing the video. Her. Anyway, more singing, more singing. Wait. Magic? How did she get from the stage to the bar in half a second? While we're on the topic of things not making sense... What do you think? I think you look, uh, I mean, looks... Jack, we're friends for Christ's sake. It's not like we're brother and sister. What does that even mean? Where's the money gonna come from? The club is still failing and the master plan is to raise admission prices. It's not good enough! Please someone claim Cher is unfit and remove her power of attorney. She clearly is not sane. Love interest becomes a peeping Tom. We get bras designed to look like tits. For fuck's sake, burlesque shows you tits. Maybe not nipple, but it fucking shows you tits. By aiming for a rating where you can't have half the cast topless, you are shooting your burlesque-based film in the foot. You might as well have a film named Come Shot and rate it PG. Ready? Apparently, her ability to sing while sounding like she's lip-syncing is sexy now because slimy bastard von stupid dinner. hair suddenly likes her enough to take her home and to talk to her about buying sell. air. Whoever he sold it to would have had to put up a huge tower, so I bought the air rights. Now no one can ever build above one story. Why aren't you clever? Mall guy gets to keep his property. I smell a plot point! I would like to make special mention of this one scene, as it's the only part which not only made me laugh, but I feel was the best line in the entire movie. Let's go, let's go, five minutes. Alley Cat, you're up next. Oh, my Nana used to call me Alley Cat. Did you really? That's so fascinating. Why don't I have a nickname? Oh, you do. Well, he never uses it. No, I do. When? When you leave the room. Slut. I heard that. So I sorry, I had no idea. Oh, oh my God. That's it! Best line of the film, no more! Everything from here is downhill, ladies and gentlemen! So can we stop now? No. Fuck you! It's a cold and crazy world that's raging outside But baby, me and all my girls are bringing on the fire I need something less offensive on my delicate ears. How about this? Oh no you don't. This is your punishment. You're watching the whole thing. Damn it. 
Why is this club getting more popular by abandoning the thing that makes their act unique? Fuck this movie! So while Ali is singing, we see that she and McDreamy are getting close. Love interest is getting jealous. Tess gets the final notice again. I don't care! McDreamy introduces her Shut to a producer. Up. You work with Ed and Jane. Well, we got a set of pipes on you too, young lady. Yeah, she sounds just like the person who sings Christina Aguilera's albums. And why are they taking us away from Alan Cumming doing oh. impersonation of half of the cast of Circus of Horrors to make us look at the cast of twats? I want more Alan Cumming! <laughs> so Tess is to sing a song for the club which she needs to practice. It's just in case one song by Cher wasn't enough. What I want to know is, how is this ballad burlesque, and how is it meant to keep a crowd who comes to see upbeat music with booze and naked women interested? It's bad enough we haven't seen any boobs yet! Oh, sad share. Having someone who's supposed to be so sad with literally sparkling skin is just fucking distracting. Oh good, it's over. Oh for god's sake! You haven't seen the last of me. You haven't seen the last of me. Um, okay. I guess she's finished practicing. No thanks to the DJ. No indication that she wants to check something. Just gonna walk off. Okay then. Oh good. Now we get Nikki complaining Tess, to, to Tess about oh. Ali. Yes. I'm tired, Nikki. Well then you can just listen. We built this club together, and, and then some girl shows up from out of nowhere who hasn't even paid her dues. How do you know what dues she's paid? Drum-da-dum-drama, 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 drum-da-dum-drama. Anyway, drum-da-dum-drama-ing over, the evil blonde one's nemesis quits. I quit! I'm glad! Seeing as the blonde one's evil, you'd think that the nemesis wasn't, but no, she's just less evil. You know, I would be more invested the in the way, scene if Cher's concern would show on I her face. Vince, Maybe you could move your eyebrow. Oh, sorry. That's impossible. Home every night, so finally, the love interest and Ali have the inevitable everywhere. fight oh, because they are both sexually fear. frustrated yeah, and just need to have like sex. If it's with each other, fine, say, but for fuck's sake, stop bitching time. about it. You're a bartender slash piano player who writes songs that are never ready. Apparently, that's a terrible insult where this film is from. So the film changes scenes and we are now at a wedding and oh, fuck off! I go to weddings. We do over 200 weddings a year. There is no bride who would wear a dress that is that short and make bridesmaids wear that short in pink fur. The jolt to this wedding where two people I didn't see her marrying and the fact that the roommate's girlfriend didn't make it made me think that this is a dream and it was the evil blonde fantasizing with the guy she clearly wants to fuck so you just decided and then not suck to the come. soul out of it because she's evil and must be stopped before she kills again. And they are having the reception in a church! Just so stupid! See, Mama, can I borrow a minion? Knock yourself out. Huh? Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. I feel much better. Therapeutic, isn't it? Yeah, so love interest has broken it off with the fiancé, and they go home together drunk. I'll give you three guesses where this is going. Be careful. Hagen, get the minions to do the dance of whimsy. Go fuck yourself. With the DVD. Okay, I'll take it all back. He is gay. And apparently Superman. Nobody that drunk is that quick or coordinated. Just fucking fuck already, you fucking fucks, you aren't fucking fucking! Water. Okay, I don't know about you, but if a girl is looking at your penis and laughing, that's probably not a good sign. Oh good, they're finally going to... Why did you put your pants back on? Okay, it's a musical. I can understand the thematic mixing of a sex scene with her singing, but why the fuck did she have to transform into a blonde Sophie Ellis Bexter to do it? This goes on for a while. By the time it's finished, I'm about to castrate three minions and turn their testicles into fucking coin purses. Don't ask me how. Oh look, post-coital drama. Everyone's crazy and or evil. Fuck this film! Give me a comedy about a transsexual superhero battling alien lesbians any day. Oh look, that girl from Glee just rocked up. I can't believe 
believe I bought your bullshit. She's nothing. She's just some girl that I work with. She's not even pretty. Well, at least you were honest about one thing. I, you no, said that? Yes. No, I did not. Yes, did. I did not. No, I didn't. Yes. Remember this. I'm going to come back and reference it later. So oh, Ali leaves and I runs into Sean. Brown eyes, glasses. Sean. I'm calling him John. Wait, so she knew Stanley yeah. Tucci was staying here? Yeah. She had the address and everything, and yet the guy that he's staying with and fucking... They don't know each other's names. I think that's the DJ he brought home randomly. Okay, still homophobic, but not quite as bad. Slimy bastard hey. von Stupid Hair calls her and she jumps at the chance yes. to spend time with him because... Okay, rebound much? No, wait, he didn't so the bank has knocked Cher back again. He just sat there playing with this wooden thingy on his desk. What thing? The long wooden block thingy. A nameplate? So yes. she's gone to the banks and they're being evil. Yeah. Okay, but they have a hot new draw bringing in lots of people. They're getting serious attention from the news media. Surely that should make a bank a little more likely to give her a loan. She didn't even know what a nameplate was called. I can't imagine why they thought she was a bad business risk. Hmm. I see that financially you're doing much better, that your numbers are constantly rising, and it would be really, really intelligent of me to give you some money right now. But I won't, because your tears give me strength. Just walk away. I don't care if you walk away. I don't care what happens. I will beat down the door of every bank in LA. I will never give up this club. I think I saw her eyebrow move. Oh no, sorry, just a shadow. So it turns out McSlimey wants to build luxury apartments where the club is located. But this is the address of the burlesque lounge. Best view on the Sunset Strip. With no windows. When I'm through with it, it'll have a thousand. Does Tess know about this? Tess knows I've made an offer to buy her space. What makes oh, sure ever he is so very short. evil. She's He's going to give Cher money and build new buildings. It's a win -win He's a monster. Goodbye possibility of dating her. Personal. I don't understand. I'm trying to do something that benefits everyone. How does that make me the bad guy? It doesn't, Marcus. It just makes you the wrong guy. Damn right, she needs a guy who'll bitch up a dwarf and then eat three endangered species that are fucking conscious. Call me crazy, but wouldn't it make sense to either take the money and build a club elsewhere, or keep the club and build on top? The club isn't that high. You could keep it, build another income stream, and still have the penthouse suites. Where the fuck is everyone's logic? If a DJ can see the solution, why the fuck can't a millionaire or a club owner? So Ali rushes over to tell Tess who isn't interested in listening, and she finally says what we have all been saying the whole movie. I am tired of talking. I am talked out. This time, you're gonna hear me out. I don't wanna hear you out. Do you ever listen to anything other than the sound of your own voice? No! So they hatch a plan to bring it over to the guy across the street, who has his own building. They tell him about the building that is going to go up on top of the club and how it will ruin his view. And, you guessed it, air rights. Okay, let me get this straight. We find out that Slimy Bastard von Stupid Hair's talk earlier about air was actually Chekhov's talk about air because he mentioned you could buy the area above a short building so that nothing taller could be built. So you could keep a good view. So they're off to tell people who live nearby in the hope that they will buy the air above the club so it won't get torn down and replaced with a tower. Because clearly people would much rather save their view of the city and of a stylized strip club on their doorstep than a tower. Oh, and why is the old guy being played by Burt Reynolds? I know I keep saying a few things, but seriously, listen to this. To draw up a contract takes longer than 48 hours, which is the amount of time they have left. There would be lots of negotiations to ensure the club does not get screwed over. This means you would have to have a lawyer, which costs money they don't have. Surely Mick Slimy is going to contest said proposal, which means it would go to the courts, which would then need to be adjudicated on. And finally, how they came across this information is at the very least a breach of privacy that could land everyone in legal hot water. This plan makes no sense and could not happen! Thank God this is finally over. So Tess buys out her ex-husband. Where did you get this? Thin air. Oh look, the less evil of the two evil women is back at the club and being apologetic. Because it's the end and everything needs to be fucking happy. Especially the evil blonde who will next invade neighboring clubs for leaving from and destroy the lives of other performers who aren't quite as evil as her. Fuck this motion picture! Oh look, love interest comes back groveling. Yes, all must worship at the altar of evil blonde! And her altar is her vagina. Which is the source of her power. 
When you lied to me about your engagement being over or when you kicked me out of your apartment? It really was over. Okay, and she's gone. I'm here to apologize. Remember that clip I said I would reference? Here it is again. I can't believe I bought your bullshit. She's nothing. She's just some girl that I work with. She's not even pretty. Well, at least you were honest about one thing. I, you no, said that? Yes. No, I did not. Yes, I did not. No, I didn't. So are you really going to trust a guy who lets a stranger into his fiance's bed without telling her for weeks? All those things that the fiance said, she had no reason to lie about what he said to her. He, on the other hand, did. Especially then. Congratulations. You two both deserve each other. Oh, and we finished the movie with him handing her his song and getting her to sing it. Why the fuck is he making her sing a song she's never heard before? No doubt it'll be fucking perfect. Live. Fuck. This. Movie. When did they fucking practice this dance? When did the band practice? And that was Burlesque. What did you think, dear Amanda? Fuck you! This film is an attempt by Hollywood to recapture the shine and success of musicals like Chicago and Moulin Rouge for a modern audience. In its attempt to fill the theaters, they got current pop star, an old pop star, McDreamy, teenage appeal guy, and a couple of good actors like Alan Cummings and Stanley Touche. My head was starting to hurt with the amount of film cliches and lines they put into this movie. Small country girl dreams of making it big in Hollywood, finds work cleaning tables till a big break comes along, helped by an old has-been, meets a boy, falls in love, and they bravely save the place which is going to be torn down, and she finds happiness in the last place she looks. For fuck's sake, the only thing they didn't include was a long-lost father and the death of a family pet. With no main villain and us sympathizing more with the guy who's trying to buy the club rather than the main girl, unrealistic situations, whiny 2D characters, and a paint-by-number storyline, it's really no wonder that this film was destroyed by critics and lost a lot of fucking money at the box office. The music is boring, probably with the exception of the last song, but even that is only a 6 out of 10. The songs on this album are songs that I would call filler. None would get any radio play, and quite frankly, I can see why. It's a bad movie and a bad soundtrack. Do yourself a favor and go see what Burlesque really is in a proper club. I wouldn't fucking watch this movie if you fucking paid me. So, Amanda, what do you usually do to movies you hate? Okay, I insert them into the anuses of my minions sideways, and then I burn them to a fucking crisp, and then I cover them in fucking concrete and drop them into the middle of the ocean! And given that there's no oceans near Haganistan, that's an achievement in itself! Oh. Do you mind if I just destroy it then? It'll give you more instant gratification. Fine! So, Diamanda, have you learnt your lesson? Oh yes, indeed. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's why you've been putting me through HELL! I've been having the minions work in the code. And they've broken it! Okay... Cause not only have we managed to break the code, but we've managed to reverse it! Mother of God. Oh yes. And with you connected, we can play anything, anything like... Ah! Yes! Feel the pain you find the title. Science reject! There's more where that came from! Ah, my ears are bleeding! Radiance increase the intensity! I'm Dima Dog! <laughs> Touche, Nemesis. I'm Soundbite. Protecting the world from bad music. And I need an aspirin. Yo! Soundbite show. Keep it fresh, y'all. Alright? Protecting the world from bad music. This is the Soundbite show, talking about the songs you know. Some music is really bad, I hope it is just a fad. Bringing up my techno gun, injecting a little fun. We gonna keep working it all day until the work is done. This is just what we gonna do, just me and my DJ crew. Every time we post something, I promise you it's something new. This is the Soundbite show, all of the music you know. Everything we do for show, we put it on the Soundbite show.